Hey, welcome back to another edition of Inside Earlham Women's Basketball right here on Radio Troy Digital Sports. Head coach Shauna Watson joining us again this week. Quakers have just one game coming up on Saturday. They'll take on Mount St. Joe out on the road. And if I'm not mistaken, we won't see this Earlham team back here until 2018. I think it's around the 16th yeah. of January. So it's going to be a long time before we see you again. Yes, that is correct. Uh, before we talk about this week, let's go back to last week. We always like to go back and uh, kind of review what happened. Uh, tough loss here at home against a Bluffton team. Yeah. Uh, you know, as I, I watched that game progress, and it wasn't like it was a complete blowout from the very beginning, but it just kind of it was just a piece by piece thing where they ended up winning the ball game by a large margin toward yeah. the end. Go back, kind of give me your idea of what happened in that game, and then we'll talk about the game against Manchester. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a tough loss for us. I mean, we knew that Bluffton was a good basketball team uh, coming into it, and I, I think they might have been a little intimidated when they came in. Um, I told them that if they go out there and they play hard for 40 minutes, we're going to be in that game, and I don't feel like we started out that way. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that we started out a little sluggish, um, and we didn't come out as hard as we possibly could, and then we turned the ball over too much. Yeah. Um, and so that really killed us uh, throughout that whole game. We They didn't really have to work for a lot of their points. We kind of just turned it over and gave it to them. So I think the next time comes around, hopefully we'll be more prepared and, and realize that we can't actually compete with this team if we do what we're supposed to do. So. Yeah. You know, and against good teams, and you know this, your margin of error becomes much, much smaller. Right. And when you turn the ball over 28 times, you give them 28 extra possessions. That's a tough thing to overcome. Yes, absolutely. It's yeah, when you turn the ball over against some other teams, they may not necessarily capitalize on it. And when you score 33 points off of a team's turnovers, it's you're, there's no coming back from that. Yeah. Um, it's 28 possessions. We don't even attempt a shot. Yeah. Um, so it's frustrating to think that we could actually be in that game if we just made better decisions. But it's also a good thing knowing that if we can fix this issue, we're going to be more competitive with these teams. So yeah. hopefully we figure it out sooner than later. So. Fixing the issue, though, is not an easy thing, it appears right now. We'll get to the Manchester game in a couple of moments because it looks like to me the pattern is 20-plus turnovers per ball game, and, boy, that's a, that's a huge hill to climb right now. Yeah, it's tough, and I think the more nervous they are to make a mistake, the more likely they are to make one. Yeah. Um, and so that's also a mental battle that we're fighting. Um, and I've tried a lot of different methods, so we're going to keep trying uh, to kind of fix this problem because um, I think I don't want it to be too late um, before we actually figure it out and it's too close to the end of the season. So it's it's something that's urgent that we need to figure out right now because we're doing everything else so well. I mean, yeah. we're rebounding well. We're pushing the ball in transition well. Our offense looks good. Like, we're doing a lot of things and we've progressed so far. And it's just frustrating to see us make these mistakes and, and just kind of give the game away at this yeah. point. You know, and you and I talked about this in previous games it's the turnover and there's there's two different turnovers there's one that is a, a reasonable one I guess if there is one but then there are others that to me are unforced errors where the the ball's just thrown out of bounds or you throw it away behind the the person you're supposed to go to those are the ones that drive me nuts the most I'm probably sure they do you as well yeah I mean I've I've told our guards all the time I said aggressive turnovers I'm okay with you want to yeah. throw it up to the rim runner and you just accidentally throw it out of bounds like I'm fine with those turnovers it's it's us already having our mind made up before we want to make a pass and then it's not there and now there's no going back so we either travel or we throw it into the defense or we do something like that and so it's just getting them used to um, understanding our offense and and making adjustments if the defense takes away what we want yeah. um, and that just comes with experience I mean I'm expecting a lot out of younger players and the yeah. more that they play the more comfortable they're going to get and the less nervous they're going to be every game that they go in there so yeah. I think we just got to be patient and I think it hopefully will kind of work itself out but what do they say do you do you get feedback from them about what is making them to the point where they're that nervous where they turn the ball over or? I mean, yeah, I mean they tell me a little bit I mean, well they'll ask why why do you think I'm turning the ball over um, but it's hard for me to answer that question yeah. for yeah. them and again it's I cannot make the passes for them, and I can't make decisions for them. At some point, they kind of have to figure it out on their own. Um, and again, that just comes with experience. The more that they play, the more comfortable they're going to feel. Um, I try to do what I can to you know, not take them out when they make a mistake or to not yell at them when something happens to kind of keep their confidence up. But they're so hard on themselves that it's hard for them to get out of it. They're frustrated. Yeah. They're mad at themselves that they're making these mistakes. And so hopefully, you know, we'll get past that. Well, that's a good sign then, yeah. if they didn't care 
there, then that would be a real issue. Yeah, for sure. absolutely. All right, you go to Manchester, you lose 64-58. Uh, the numbers, 23 turnovers, but you shot 43%, which was better. Right. The number that stood out to me that made me think, you know, when generally out rebound a team, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah. 41 to 24, and yeah. you lost 64 58. Mm. It's, it's crazy. Uh, rebounding was our nemesis at the beginning of the season, and we've really focused on it. I'm so proud of them for fixing that problem. Boxing out is it's not a mental thing, it's not a skill thing. It's just you got to go find someone and you got to box them out and go get the rebound. And they've done such a great job. And I just hope that they continue that because once we get this turnover problem figured out, I mean, when you only give a team five offensive rebounds for the game, like yeah. you should easily win. Like, and we're getting 10 to 12. So, like, yeah. I think it's been really good. Um, we did everything possible to win that game, and we should have. Um, we just needed about 10 more possessions that we could have at least attempted a shot. Um, so hopefully we get to that point eventually. But mm. Yeah, I'll tell you what, and the one thing about your team, again, you're not very big to out-rebound another team. That's, to me, pretty amazing. Yeah, so. well, and we out-rebounded Bluffton, too, actually. Um, and Bluffton's one of the best rebounding teams we'll face all season. Yeah. And so I want them to understand that. I've been trying to really focus on the positives and say, you know, look how far we've come from our first game giving up 21 offensive rebounds in our very first game of the season to yeah. only letting up five is a huge improvement for us. Um, and I, like I said, I really try to focus on those positives and but still try to fix these issues that we have. Yeah. All right. We'll tell you what we'll talk about their next game coming up on Saturday against Mount St. Joe. That's coming up next right here on Inside Earlham Women's Basketball and Radio Troy Digital Sports. For the past 35 years, Van Vliet Insurance has built a reputation of bringing a personal touch. That's because at Van Vliet, it's all about you, your needs, your life, and our town. Along with providing quality coverage to individuals, families, and local businesses, we're proud of our community and the opportunity we have to protect your future within it. Van Vliet Insurance, an Erie Insurance representative, hometown professionals at work for you. Well, as we mentioned in the beginning of the program, the Quakers won't be back home until January, so they're going to be on the road for quite some time. That does include the Christmas break and one matchup this week on the road at Mount St. Joe. Um, what do you do this week in practice? I think the obvious is you're going to work on taking care of the basketball a little <laughs> yeah. bit more. I understand that part. What else are you going to work on before you get to Saturday? Yeah, I mean, it's really just kind of breaking some things down. We've uh, watched a lot of film um, and just trying to break some things down as far as our press. Um, we've had some issues with that, too, mm -hmm. um, just giving up some transition points. Our transition defense still needs improvement. Um, so it's kind of just fine-tuning some of those things. Um, because the turnover thing is not necessarily a skill we can drill. Right. Um, it's kind of just more about decision making and showing them like, no, you should have made this pass versus this pass. So we're kind of work on some of those things, get a lot of shots up, um, making sure we keep doing what we've been doing well and not forgetting about those things. Yeah. So. You know, not every player is a great passer either. It, I kind of kind of think about a shooter. It, it, you either it's a tough thing to decide whether to shoot or pass. And to me, it's also a tough thing to decide whether do I make this pass? I don't think enough players nowadays do enough fakes with the basketball. And right. those are things that I just don't see as much. Am I correct? Yeah, so I mean, we've we've really worked on um, our spacing too, mm -hmm. which has contributed to some of the turnovers. Um, and so I think that that's helped yeah. as far as like, you know, we'll drive to the basket, we fill behind instead of spacing to the corner. Um, and so we've kind of fixed some of those things. Um, and yeah, just making better decisions as far as, well, maybe I should shoot it here, or maybe I shouldn't. Because I thought our shot selection at Manchester was the best it's been um, since we've started. Good. And so that's an improvement as well. And that's why we shot better, because yeah. our shot selection was better. So it's good to see those improvements and that they're fixing those things. So, like I said, I think I think it will get there. Yeah. Um, we just got to keep keep plugging away. You know, Zoe Curtis is probably from, and now you didn't see much of her last year, but her improvement from one year to the next to me is dramatic. Yeah, just from preseason until now is amazing. Uh, she... I think is one of the better post players in our league right now, yeah. if not the best one. Um, she is, I mean, they had to start doubling her at Manchester um, and she's never felt something like that. Yeah. So I thought, I think it's great. Um, and like I said before, it opens up the outside so much for us. Like Mariah hit, she was three or four threes and that's because there's, she's sucking all of the defenders in and now we're open and that, that creates better shots for us. So it's great. I mean, there's a, there's a lot more positives to take from that game than negatives. So. Yeah. And her ability to kick the basketball out yep. too, is what you're mentioning. Yep. Uh, Mount St. Joe, you go there on Saturday. Talk about what you expect on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, it's another. It's going to be another tough battle. Um, 
you know, it's a game that they think that they can win, mm -hmm. and it's a game that we think that we should win. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just going to be another tough battle, um, and Mount St. Joe's always a tough place to play. I remember playing there when I was in college, and uh, it's it'll be a it'll be a scrappy game. It'll be yeah. physical. Um, so it'll also be interesting to see how the officiating goes as well. Um, we got to play a lot more at Manchester. Not quite Good. as many fouls were called, but and it's like you go into another game, they might call it differently. So we'll see how it goes, but I, it's it's going to be competitive. So hopefully we rise to the challenge. So. Do you find when you go to Ohio, they call it a little bit closer? Because I found that in high school basketball yeah. that uh, sometimes you don't get quite as many breaks over there. But yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hit or miss, really. Yeah. Uh, it'll it'll be interesting, but I think in Mount St. Joe's been playing so much better um, than they have in the past, and so they're going to be ready to go. They've got a lot of confidence rolling right now, so hopefully, you know, we can we can play our best and, and come out with a win. And I like your what you said a little bit ago. They think they're going to beat you because they feel this is a game they can win. Sure. So that's always, I guess. Kind of a home court advantage right a little yeah. bit yeah. yeah absolutely it's you can't give a team confidence yeah. um and so and i tell them that from the beginning you come out and you play hard and you knock them down early that's just going to set us up better for the rest of the game so and i thought we came out and played really well against manchester actually I mean, we won the first quarter so i thought we started out really well yeah. um and so hopefully we can do that at manchester as well so hey, and the other thing is yeah i was going to say the other thing is this week it's a little bit of a different routine as you mentioned to me before we started you know, finals week, and I'm, I think they probably do too. I mean, I'm not sure what Mount St. Joe's week is like, but now you got to go through that, and the routine's a little bit different. Yeah, so we're going to try to keep things the same. Uh, we're going to practice Monday, Tuesday. We're going to take Wednesday off because that would typically be our game day. So give them a break, maybe get some shots up, and then we'll do our scouting report Thursday, Friday, and then play at Mount St. Joe. So try to keep the routine a little bit the same uh, yeah. just so they're kind of used to it. But, yeah, it is a little bit different. So All right. Coach, good luck this week. Yeah, thank, thank you, you as always. Appreciate it. Shauna Watson joining us. Again, you can go to the Earlham website, goerlum.com. All the latest statistics, pictures, and much, much more right there on goerlum.com. And we'll see you again next week right here on Inside Earlham Women's Basketball on Radio Troy Digital Sports.